Yeah, I put money in the account and I gave them the credentials and they would blow my account. Like I don't understand. They were blowing it? They would blow my account. I put money in it at least two, three times. And when I put I'll, I'll put maybe like like three, four hundred in it, they will blow the account. It's funny with the layoff thing a lot like i read a lot of news like financial news and yo it's, it's supposed to be a lot of that happening getting ready to come in 2023 like people really gotta come on with their skills like forget trading for a second i ain't gonna run an ad on nobody what i'm gonna say is like whatever skills people is trying to get they better start like getting them side hustles together because uh i was telling a friend of mine because i'm like real tech savvy I was like, yo, um, some of the software that you guys are using while y'all were working from home, it was recording the task and processing that data to learn how to do the job for you. So a lot of these dudes that my friends are still home two years later, I say, yo, you know that they that software is learning your job so that they can replace you. And he was like, oh, I didn't think about it. I said, yeah, you think the software is watching you work to make sure you working at home. It's watching you to learn your trade. One minute chart. So it's like, it's going to be a lot of that happening, I heard. I heard it's going to be a lot of, like, it's going to start with, like, the banks. A lot of bank people work at the banks, they're going to get laid off. And this is not the fear monger, it's just what I'm hearing. But, you know, I heard it's going to start happening in 2023. Like, for the next two years, I heard they're going to start phasing out a lot of stuff. Hey, listen, man, them dudes where I worked was terrified. I just got a call, 90% of them got fired, the ones that stayed. I'm like, yo, I saw it coming. Like, I saw all of that. I'm like, yo, people got to, yo, if you serious about stuff, you got to get on it. Yeah, that's why I made those videos. People get, oh, I like your video. I'm like, bro, I'm not talking just because I want to entertain you. I'm telling people, like, I'm trying to tell people, yo, wake up. Because that COVID showed a lot of people they could work, they could live without you. You know what I mean? So jobs are, like, jobs are taking hits. So, all right, so I'm going to start the video off. Um... Right now, we got my brother Neil, man. O'Neal, I don't know if you want to be called O'Neal or Neil. I usually call you Neil, so. All right, good, man. I don't want to be offensive. So, we got you here, man. Um, I remember you came to the Discord, like, right as it started. You're one of the first day one guys who was here. Uh, I know that you've, like, pretty much, you came, you checked out the course, I believe. That's how I started. You saw the video about me quitting my job, right? Right, so then you checked out the course. Uh, a lot of people ask me about the course. They ask me, um, what do I teach? And they think that because I saw automated software, a lot of people seem surprised when I tell them that's not in the course. The course is actually how to trade without software, like just how to use basic indicators and everything. Right, so, and I start you off simple, and I try to, like, simplify it. But let me ask you about you before we get into me or anything about the trade game official or whatever. Uh, how long have you been trading? Um, trading about going seriously? Mm -hmm. Two years. Let me turn on the audio. Okay, we got that. You've been trading for two years? Okay, so we, we've been trading about the same time. That's good. So you've been trading about two years? Yeah. Um, I first got introduced um, through like regular stocks. And through there, I said, I'm going to get stocks that have dividends. Realize the dividends that they pay back <laughs> is like two cents from what I can afford to contribute. So from You need there, a million to make a dollar. dollar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. From That's there, the part they don't tell the you. Options. Yeah. <laughs> from there, I went into the options and learning about options, I came across the Forex. Oh, and you yo, you saw, yo, I know a lot of people who came that route. <laughs> okay no my partner actually he started out with options oh wow! it's funny a lot of people who are who i met who become good traders they usually started out from options mm. like i noticed there's a correlation with that i see I, I started out with just forex 
But a lot of people who I ran into who are good traders actually started out the same way you did. Nice. Yeah, you sound like my partner. You said exactly this. That's exactly how you started out. Okay, so you started out in options. How long did you mess with options before you switched to Forex? Um, maybe a good four months, something like that. I was on YouTube trying to learn more about the options and stuff like that, and I came across the Forex stuff, and it's like that seemed to be a lot more lucrative. So I was like, I. I'll mess with that and see what happens. <laughs> Translation. You sound like me when I found out about options. Translation. You sound like you could get cooked a lot less. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, we have a possible change to bullish part momentum. Of the, part of the robot. Look for a move to the upside on Euro Looney one minute chart. Yeah, I got to turn off the one minute chart. I don't even trade the one minute chart. Never did. Um. Okay, so that that sounds good. So you switched over to Forex, and so you've been trading, what, Forex for two years, or are you just part of the process? It's part of the process. Okay, okay. So you started out with Forex. Um, do you have, like, a favorite pair and a favorite time that you like to trade? I really don't. I don't have a favorite pair at all. Um, coming across your, your course and everything and how you trade, you have everything. So it's kind of hard to, like, just do one particular and, like, stick to it. But um, I know London session is the most volatile, so I try to get up for that one. But with the whole work schedule, it's not the easiest session to get up for. But um, between London and New York, that's usually what I what I what I mess with. Okay. Well, I mean, it, London is the most volatile, but like that's why I asked that you have a favorite pair because some people don't understand that um, when you trade certain pairs, it's good to trade certain pairs at certain times, like. Correlation, obvious correlation. If you trade GJ, you would want to trade that at 3 a.m. Central time. So Eastern time, my time, rather. You would want to trade um, London at, you know, uh, GJ at London time. So it depends on what you trade. Like if you trade stocks, you want to trade that at New York session. So it, right. a lot of people just kind of disregard that sometimes. I, like, I notice a lot of people actually don't pay attention to that. But that's actually important. Some people just mm -hmm. trade whatever pair, like Gorilla style. I get up at 8 and I trade GJ. I'm like, yeah, but you just missed like 200 pips at, at 3. So that would be weird to me, but it worked for people. Like, it's whatever works. So I don't judge it, but it's usually whatever works. So that's why I wanted to ask you, what if, did you have a favorite pair? Because I know with me, when I was still at work, I love GJ, but I'd be damned if I was getting up at 3 to trade that I had to go to work. Because I was working, I was working oh. my main shift was 8 to, four, eight to 5. So mm -hmm. I was like... I was London, New York session was just taking me apart. I would have to like drop a trade and go away for two or three hours and come back and pray I was right. Can't watch, it. yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You can't watch it. You can't keep your eye on it at all. Put your stop losses in and and get <laughs> hit, get hit because they love. You know that's another thing too. Uh, when I started out trading, a lot of things with brokers like I was using these brokers that. I'm going to just keep it real. No shots. They, what I'm about to say is just my opinion. This ain't got nothing to do with Neil. This is just me because I don't want nobody to think we came here and I'm not going to try to bash or try to be respectful. But <clears throat> YouTube had me like, YouTube just had me in this place where it was just like do whatever you want type of thing where it was like uh, at 8 o'clock, I would have these brokers that were like bogus. I was using these brokers that, like, as soon as you put a stop loss, your price would just go to it. I'm like, yo, wait a minute. Like, it was weird. It was like, when I first started, I had to be using the worst brokers on the planet. Because every time I put a stop loss and come back, I would see my stop loss got hit. But the trade direction was right. Oh, wow. I would be like, yo, I had the right direction, but... It wicked into my stop loss, took me out and kept it going. Like, imagine when you see we have price a in the direction you wanted to be. bullish momentum. Let me look look for fast. a move to the upside on Euro Kiwi one minute chart. Imagine price going to where you wanted to go and you was right about that, but you got stopped out. It was like, yo, I was really feeling hopeless about that. And I was like, yo, I was tempted so many times to just leave my job just to see if I was right about trading. Yeah, now and it would be days when I would go home and I, I would take off a day or whatever. And I'm not I'm not a person that takes off from my job. Like I would get paid sick days. It was like people who 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 were upset with me they're like yo you don't take off i'm like bro i need this money like i gotta get paid baby so yeah so i came to work but the days that i would take off and trade i would get gassed i'm like oh i had a good day i think i could do this <laughs> i think i could do this and then um i had ran into like a rut i remember right before i left i ran into like a little i, I ran into some bad trading ruts 
And, um, we have a possible change to bearish momentum. The main, the Look main for a thing move to the downside I, on I Kiwi Looney one minute was. chart. I'm going to tell you what the main thing I used to do that was bad. My partner used to get on my case about it. He'd be like, yo, what, what pig? He know I love GJ. He like, yo, what trade you in? And anytime he would say that, I know what it meant. That meant the pair that he know that I like is booming. So I would be like, oh, I'm not in the trade right now. And he would be like, why? And I, would, I didn't have the heart to tell him. I got cooked. I just got cooked on GJ. So he would be like, why are you not in the trade? I'm like, well, and then I hit him with the YouTube rhetoric. Well, I lost the trade, so I'm done trading for the day. And he would be like, yo, why you keep stopping if you lose a trade? I was like, because I don't want a revenge trade. He was like, yo, where did you get this? Where did you get that from? And I'm like, YouTube. He was like, yo, if you know you you right about trading, he said price is going to keep moving. You better keep trading it. He's like, you don't just stop because you lost the trade and come back the next day. By then, you go miss the move. It's the whole move, yeah. And then people, and then I realized when people say, how come you hold a trade? How do you know when they get in and get out? I'm like, why would you get out of a trade if you? We have a it? possible change to bullish momentum. And that's the Look main. Look for a move, move to the upside on pound loony one minute no, chart. that's the main thing people don't understand. Why would you get out of a trade if you win in it? Like right now, on the chart up top, you see I'm winning these three trades right here on this this account, right? Okay. People would say, "Oh, take your profits," and I'm like, "Yeah, you're right." But if I know price is going to continue in the direction of the trade I'm in, why am I getting out? See, it's the uncertainty. That's what it is. Right, psychology. Sure. It's the psychology. Sure. But it's it's really not uncertainty because look at this chart right in front of you. You can look at this chart and see that look. I'm going to go to this chart right now and show you what I'm about to say. You can look at this chart right now and see, clear as day, price is trying to go to this point right here where this wick is, right? This is the high that price is trying to go to, right? So if you, let's say you took a buy on this, this pair right here. There's no uncertainty. You know price is coming back to this level. You know that, but you got to kind of like figure it out. You got to be confident. You got to believe like what you see. You got to understand that. I get that part. But there's no question price is going back to that point. So if you're in a buy, all you got to do is just ride it out. I hope you don't over leverage. Well, that's a whole nother conversation. If you over leverage and then, yeah. Yeah. But you know, you know, and speaking of over leverage, speaking of that, speaking of over leveraging, you know what to get you to really stop doing that? We have a possible a change account. to bullish momentum. Look for a move to the upside on NASDAQ 115 minute and chart. Speaking of funded accounts, <laughs> speaking of, you know where we get ready to go with this, right? <laughs> speaking of funded accounts, man, I want to say congratulations to my man Neil because you just got your funded account. Sir, thank you. Thank yeah, you. we got to clap it up for that, man. Yeah. Yeah, so how did it feel, man? Let's get into that. How, first of all, how did it feel taking that challenge? Um,. Taking the challenge, I was I was confident. Um, the challenge before that, I had yeah, I was doing so good, and I got to the point where I even put some Discord. Like I'm like eighty dollars away from passing phase one, and the very next day, I blew the whole thing trying to get eighty dollars. It happens. You know, I blew the whole thing. It happens. I've done that. I I, I think everyone does that. Yeah, so I I wait I I, I, have, I blew it on a Friday, I, I I bought the new account, the new the new phase on on the Monday, started trading the Tuesday, and never looked back. Never now looked back. now here's something, and I'm glad you said that. Now here's the key thing I want people who who listen to what you just said to not miss skip over something you just said. Two things you said. The first the first thing and then the second thing was Friday. We gonna talk about Fridays and uh, funded accounts. That's the first trap. We're going to talk about that, but hold on. Um, the the main thing is you was confident, but you said that Friday, that by that Monday, you had already started another challenge. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. You kept going. Oh, yeah, for sure. Right. You didn't stop. You didn't cry. You just kept yeah, yeah, going. I knew I could do it. I knew I could do it. Right. See, and this is what people got to realize. This is exactly why I wanted to talk to you, and this is what I want people to hear from you, because people don't understand they they don't realize because of the nature, and this is not a, another dig at YouTubers. It's just I want to talk about the culture of trading and YouTube culture, right? People don't realize on YouTube that it kind of just only shows you the good parts. 
So a lot of people who want to take count front of the count challenge don't know these people. We all fail these things. I don't lie about it. I tell people, like, yo, you gonna fail. You might fail two or three of them before you get one. Mm-hmm. So people you don't understand. So I want people to hear that from you. Definitely, you may fail more. Yeah, you, you gotta to fail. You gonna fail in order to learn how to win it. When when I first did my first challenge, I said I need about a hundred thousand, and I could work that to leave my job. I took that twice, failed them both times. Right. Five hundred dollars a pop. Right. So I said, you know what? Right. I'm, I'm gonna rethink this. I'm gonna go a little smaller and build my way up to it. Right. And that's all you need to do. And I, I and as you get familiar with it, you just scale up. Exactly. Or you take your capital and you put it into a regular account, or just put it wherever, or use it to. You know what we do? Take your uh your profits and use them to buy more challenges. Exactly. Yeah, just hey, I'm I'm getting my payout. I right, give me another account. Now don't go too crazy. I tell you, I done lost the couch from not using them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but losing for different reasons. <laughs> well, hey, losing them is losing them though. So it's like it's a whole process of if you start over, you might have to win. You might have to lose two or three to get one. You might win the. You know, you could get so familiar with your your favorite pair. That's why I asked you about your favorite pair. If you trade certain pairs, it's actually a common thing to see a pair reverse on Friday. That was another thing I want to get to. That's why I asked you about that. A lot of pairs tend to reverse on Fridays because they know people are holding trades. Like people like me, I like to uh, intraday and swing trade. So I know Friday I have to watch because Friday is usually when price. We have a possible change to bearish momentum. Direction. Look for a move to the downside on pound loony one minute chart. I should have turned that off before we started. Um. Price tends to go in the opposite direction, just enough to clear a stop loss. Like if you trail, or if you got like a, maybe like a hundred pips from your entry, price on Friday tends to go like in a whole another direction to get you out. If you're somebody that's trailing and stuff like that, so Fridays is very tricky to trade. Because if you think price is going up, it's gonna go down like a hundred pips and it go up. Friday is tricky. Like I trade Friday, but Friday is always. Whenever I see a reverse on Friday, I'm like, I should have known. I should have known. <laughs> Especially funded accounts. It got so bad. If I'm taking challenges, I don't do it on Friday. If I'm taking a challenge, I do not take it on Friday. I just skip Friday altogether because I already know the games. Makes sense. You be you be up 100 pips on London, and as soon as New York hit negative 100, be like, hold oh, on, I didn't stop loss. So that's what I wanted to get you here, ask you about it. I wanted people to hear your take on you know your psychology. What was your mindset getting it, going into the trade? Like, what was your strategy? What did you think? Like, what was your your risk to reward? Like, what was your pips? What was your stop loss? Your take profits? Um, my my risk to reward, I usually let it let it run and see, you know, where the it levels. Goes. I usually go for at, at least to a, 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 a two to one. Okay. But, um, yeah, that's what I usually go for. Um, I I try to stick to the, the breakouts. So if I catch a nice breakout, you don't know how far it's gonna go. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to, like, try to hold on to it and watch those. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I caught a nice breakout, and it it pretty much put me over the top. I, I, I got, um, I want to say, I, I was at 8% with, with my, my Forex funds. I got 5% off of one trade. Nice. Off a of, of a breakout. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so, so what was your risk for that trade? Like, what was your percentage? Did you risk 1%, 2%? 1%. So you did one percent and got eight percent on one trade. I got, I got five percent on. One nice, trade. nice, nice, so. nice. What pair was that? Do um, you remember? Ah oh, man. See, that's how you know we trade. We don't even be remembering. <laughs> no, a lot of people would have remembered everything about that trade. Say that again. A lot of people would have remembered everything. You don't remember what pair it was. Oh. I'll go back and check it. <laughs> See? And people, you know, but people think I'll be making this up. They'd be like, what? You don't remember? Nah, I keep it moving. I ain't married that trade. I just won that trade and kept going. People be sitting up there. I got so many pairs open. It's not even. Right. Look at the chart. Up. Look at this chart now. Look at the bottom. Look at how many pairs is open on that. This is a live account. Running. So See, people don't be believing. I, to follow you. I, I followed you in that aspect. Because because we have the software, right? I'm looking to see what's breaking out, and then I watch it, right? You know what I mean? If I catch a nice breakout, I'm gonna go for it, right? And and, and you know what? I I try to talk 
very candid, but honestly, that's why I'd be surprised, like, when people don't really jump on it, like, I think they would, like, with the scanner and stuff, people still don't really understand, they're like, well, what does that do, I'm like, it tells you when the setup is coming, and people go, okay, and then I see them, like, struggling, and I'm like, you really make it as harder than what it have to be, like, you're gonna lose way more struggling than you can by just buying an in, uh, uh, indicator, but I don't push it on people. I just let them learn because sometimes people got to learn the hallway. But I see how they yeah, be struggling. Man. Like, you do not have to struggle like that. <laughs> you don't. I be feeling bad. I'm like, damn, man, you you giving yourself a hard way to go. Hard like, way to go, course. man. Even in your course. Like, you don't we have a TGO Cloud KJ Cell Dollar Looney one hour chart. Repeat that. I'm sorry. No, you in your course, like you don't push the indicators, like you, you teach us how to do it without the indicators, because your thing is learn the trade before. Yeah, learn the trade, right? Exactly. I was just about to say you got to learn how to trade, and then the indicators just like giving you. It's like, it's like getting in shape, and the indicators just giving you like extra muscle, steroids, or whatever. It's just gonna enhance what you already have. So if you're a bad trader with an indicator, the indicator is gonna help you lose more. And that's what I tell people. I don't try to sugarcoat that. Yeah, we have a possible I'll, I'll change to bearish momentum. Look for a move to the downside on Euro Aussie one minute chart. You would be surprised how many messages I get. And I don't get a lot of messages. I'm not like no huge person. But you'd be surprised how many of the messages, the percentage of them, that are people who say, can I just turn the robot on and, and that's it? I'm like, no. And I told, I'm, I, when I hear that, I'm like, don't even buy it, because you're going to be so weird making a video talk about me. Tell them my stuff don't work. <laughs> don't even buy it. Because, you you yeah, because I tell people, I'm like, look, if that was the case, everyone could just go buy a robot and never have to work. Of course it's not that simple. I would be lying. I wish I could say that. I would be lying. But it's just going to help you with your analysis. So I don't push it too much. And with the course, I definitely don't push it, because imagine a course I'm teaching somebody how to not trade. That's just wild. <laughs> <laughs> that's so wild so uh yeah with that i mean i just wanted to get you here to get your take on that because people don't understand that um they they get too intimidated by this trading and that's why i wanted to have you talk because people don't understand it's not as complicated as you would think it is it's not the boogie man okay. right you really help with that you, you, you definitely really help with that because i've i've had i paid for other courses you know and yes they may have helped but they don't really break it down the way you break it down as far as, you know, certain strategies to use and stuff like that. And we, we have a possible for, change to bullish your, momentum. Your, your take on the wicks. I have never heard anyone break it down to even mention it like that before. You know what I mean? So that opened my eyes as well. So like I said, you really break it down into layman terms. Yeah. I don't understand why anyone wouldn't be able to understand or, or, or trade after taking your course. Well, what it is, is I don't I don't get like a lot of people that bought a course. Don't get me wrong. A good amount of people purchased it. But <clears throat> a lot of people, and I understand it too. That's why I don't really get mad. A lot of people who, who like a lot of people sign up for the course and they don't actually buy it. And then a lot of people that buy it, we have a possible a change to bearish so I, momentum. I go to check and see who Look watches. for a move to the downside on pound Aussie one minute chart. And um, it's flickering on this screen, but not on this one. That's weird. But a lot of people who buy it, they uh they don't finish it one or two. They kind of come to me and they be like, hey, I just bought six courses. And I'm like, at that point, I'm kind of like, I don't even want to like have this conversation with the person. Because then I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, look, if you don't bought six courses already, something's wrong. It ain't, it may not be the courses. Because that's kind of crazy when people tell me certain stories. And I don't, I'm not here to be hard on nobody, but everybody's process is going to be different. Yeah, but if you I buying agree. courses, you probably just course collecting at that point. So I, you know, I wish up, I, I wish a lot of people who wanted to learn how to trade would have got to me first. But if, if I'm like the fifth or, or sixth person, you just looking at it like been there, done that. Forex already got a bad name. There's a lot of people that are just. I'm not gonna say that they're, they're scammers, but let's be honest. If a person has uh, six figures worth of subscribers, do you really think they got time for you? Oh, of course not. So people should just have common sense. It's not even that the person is, is, is dissing you. Like, I've inboxed a lot of uh, YouTube traders and when I started, and they never responded to me or anything. Exactly. And I'm like, okay, I, I kind of get it. You got too many people. Because now I look at my inbox, I'm like, okay, they probably got way too many people in their inbox to have time 
for this guy who just pulled up out of nowhere. I want to learn to trade. They probably hit that a thousand times a day. Yeah. All right. So I tried to I tried to make my course and keep all that in mind. That was like my intention when I made it. I didn't make it to make money. I made it so that people that wanted to come to train it and they just wanted to learn how to trade with all, all the marketing, all the nonsense. They get that. Right. I mean, you. Me personally, my aspect on it is you take you take a little from everyone. You know what I mean? And you make it your own. So regardless, you took a course before in the past. Right. You learn. You should have learned something. Exactly. Right. And you moving forward, you learn something from someone else, and vice versa. You know, that's that's my take on it. So I, 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 I completely agree. Frame, yeah, I never had the mind frame, oh, I paid for this course, so I'm not going to buy this course. Or, you know what I mean? No, I get, that was never my, my train of thought. I get People hit me up, and they're like, hey, um, I get hit up so many times with a, a, a proposition of sell myself. It's like, hey, why should I buy yours? I brought so-and-so, and they start name dropping. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> I'm like, yo, I, at that point, I just kind of turn them away. I'm like, yeah, man, I don't know, man. I don't think you should buy my stuff. Like, I just turn them away because then you'll be name dropping me along with the rest of them. If you get to like five names, six names, are you still naming? Nah, it ain't the courses. You course collecting. You just course collecting at that point. Yeah. So, so that, that's, that's kind of what that is. But, um. Oh, you know what I wanted to ask you? I should ask you this in the beginning, too. Did you ever join any of these MLMs or any of that stuff when you first started learning? I did. You did? I did, I did actually. Wow, okay. I want to hear this. I, okay. <laughs> okay. I should have asked this first. I forget the name of the company now, but it was all trading stuff. Yeah, it don't matter. Um, they change names a lot, so. So when he approached me about it, I wasn't interested. But he showed me where you can possibly make uh, a return or that you can compound your account. Yeah, the, the whole compound interest intrigued me. So I went ahead with it and I was mainly interested in learning how to compound. And even had people that, you know, would put money in the account and they'd trade it for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I put money in the account and I gave them the credentials and they would blow my account. I don't understand. They were blowing it? They were blowing my account. I put money in it at least two, three times. And when I put, I'll, I'll put maybe like, like three, four hundred in it. They will blow the account. So at that point, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm not interested in finding no one to bring to the table to say, oh, I can get some of whatever they make. But I'm not making money on the back end either because you're not compounding. You're blowing my money. I can blow my own money. Wait, so they're not taking the money. They're actually trading it back. No, they're trading. They're trading. They're just wow. Like, <laughs> Yo, just this is crazy. <laughs> Yo. So, yeah. The only time I actually made money with them was when we would get up at 3 in the morning. And we would, like, go on, on like, a group. And we would trade together as a team. And I would make some money that way. But then you would make money. And then later on that... Yeah, it definitely wasn't consistent, and what they taught you was definitely uh, like baby, baby pips. Yeah, that's what everybody's doing. Everybody's doing yeah. that. That's what they taught you, baby pips. You know, but as far as strategy and what works and what you look for and what moves and they didn't, nah, they didn't go how to that. actually trade the skill. Yeah, nah, they, they they don't want you to trade. They want you to get people. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they get money off of the fees, right? Yeah, they don't want you to trade. We have a possible change to bullish momentum. Look for a move to the upside on Kiwi Looney one minute chart. Wow, okay. I want to hear this. Yeah, that was my MLM experience. Yo, I should ask you that in the beginning. That was too golden. That was way too golden. <laughs> wow, I'm going to have to use that clip on the intro. That's funny. Um, <clears throat> wow. And that's, that's the crazy thing because I run into a lot of, and you, this is why I be like kicking YouTube back in. You, I call them YouTube traders because that's kind of one thing I noticed. I never was a part of an MLM. I never like, they don't like me because I actually know how to trade. And for some reason, when I encounter people from the MLMs, the first thing they want to do is give, give me out their group quick. When I get into groups like that, they I start they like, hey, everyone post your trades. And I'll post like 800 pips, 900 pips. They be like, yo, 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 like, yo, get him out. Yo, who is, yo, get him out of here. Get him. Yo, he wasn't supposed to do all of that. 
So the, the <laughs> teachers be like, uh uh-uh. uh, no, oh, uh, like rule the law, what 40 laws of power, never outshine the master. I guess that's how they be feeling. Yo, they be deleting me. Like, one chick, she deleted me and it sent me a nice message. Like, I'm sorry I had to do that to you. I'm like, hey, get your money. But that's a shame because all those people was listening to her talk about a trade. And she was on the opposite side of the trade I was in. I had 600 pips in the trade. She had 100 and something in the opposite direction. And she caught she caught a news candle. And I, I don't think she realized that she got lucky. She caught the news candle because it put her in, in profit. But price was still going back up. So I posted my results to hers, and she just deleted me, man. And it was funny. And I did a little digging on her, and I found out she was an MLM chick and all. I'm like, it's always these MLMs. But the reason I'm saying this is they're scary because they make some of the best freaking marketers. Like, they're very good at coming on YouTube and putting it out there and getting subs and just being out. It's like, yo, they, they're good at it. The real traders, they don't. nobody want to listen to us. But those MLM traders, what? They be out here. They, two days, they got 100 subs, 100,000 subscribers. I'm like, yo. And I'm like, yo, I ain't mad at it. But it's just, it's crazy. People like that, that that fuckery, man. They like it. People love that market and stuff. You know how many times I was going to call my friends and say, yo, let me hold your call for like a week, bro. I, I, I got to do this. Like, I got to go crazy. Let me go get an Airbnb. I'll be right back. That's what they want to see? I know, but it's 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 crazy because it's like, yo, I always said I'm not going to be a lifestyle trader. I'm going to be a trader, like a real trader. That's why, like, right now I got the chart up. I like to show the charts. I like TGO to show, like, Cloud KJ by Kiwi Yen 5-Minute Chart. We have a possible change to bearish momentum. Look for a move to the downside on pound Kiwi 1-Minute Chart. I, I let my robots run. Yeah, you don't got the rolls or, or, or the Lambo in the background. You're not really trading yeah, yeah, but I kind of know, man. <clears throat> Look, it's like, <clears throat> this is the main thing with YouTube, and I'm going to say this, and I'm, I'm not going to go no further than what I'm about to say. I'm going to leave it after that. People don't realize that <clears throat> a lot of the people that they following that are like that on YouTube, and I love the content. I love it. I love watching them ride around doing donuts. I love it. I'm not even, I hope it continues. But the only thing people don't realize about it is that if a person really know how to trade, you got to look at a YouTube and to see when did they start blowing up like that? Was it after they started selling you stuff or was it before? It's common sense. If you go back and look, everyone who started selling something, they pop up in a condo with a, with a Ferrari. It's kind of obvious where the money came from. <laughs> if they get away with it all the time, I'll be just looking like, yo, how are y'all going to keep falling for it? Especially in my inbox. Everyone in my inbox got burnt by so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. And I'm looking at them like, how did you not know this person wasn't a real trader? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, they be want me to say their name and say something back. I don't do that because I'm not here to kick nobody back in. But I just read and I'm like, the person who you just named. You cannot be telling me you thought this person was a real trader. And they be sitting there mad. And they be mad at me. And I'm listening because they the person they talking about ain't gonna answer them. They don't got probably blocked them. Hey, they don't care. They got their money already. Listen, that exactly. They got their payment. They call payment buddy. So they, that I feel bad because it's like, yo, people really need to learn the skill and there's so much like watered down stuff there. You don't know who's real and who's not. So you're going to click on the thumbnail of a chart or a thumbnail of a Lambo? You're going to click on the Lambo thumbnail. So I get it. I get it. I would click on it too. Like, what, what's this fool talking about this Lambo? Yeah, you say, I see one candlestick on this man video. <laughs> but it's all good, man. But I ain't going to keep you, man. I just wanted to kind of like chop it up with you real fast and just get your take on taking the challenge. So how does it feel having your funded account? It feels great. It feels great. Real um, different now, right? Yeah, it does. It, you know what? It feels like the first time I came out the demo. Wow. That's what it feels like. That's wow. what it feels like. First wow. time I came out the demo. <laughs> wow. Okay. So you uh you sh- you should go to your MLM group and post that. They gonna block you though. <laughs> she should. Post that. They gonna be like, yo, you went in the funded account, get him out of here. <laughs> yo, they like, yo, you donated an account to your boss. Oh man. You gonna trade for us? No, no, no. Oh, you're going to get asked that. You're going to get asked that. Trust me. <laughs> get, somebody's going to ask you. Yo, 
Yo, start a YouTube channel if you ain't got one. You watch. But yeah, I'm congratulations to you again, man. There's a few people uh in the Discord taking the challenges. You, I know you posted that you won, so I wanted to invite you. I'm gonna invite like a few more other people and do these videos with them, just talking about trading. But um, unfortunately, one guy uh told him I want to get back to him, but he told me he had some uh, mishaps. He got a funded account. He told me he ain't trading two months. So hopefully he gets better and everything works out for him. Sounds like he's going through what I went through last year. But I came back and had my best trading year ever after that. So hopefully he's, he's in the same boat. But anybody that's not part of the trade game official Discord, the link is in the description. It's a free uh, Discord group. The only channel that's private is the course group because people want to ask questions about the course. We can't do that publicly. Besides that, though, we got Forever here, a.k.a. Forever Motivated. And uh, he just passed his funded account challenge. I think it was my Forex funds you passed, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he's here, man. So you see that trading's real. It works. No gimmicks. There's no Lambos in this video. No no nothing. Uh, and that's it. So I just wanted to say thank you, bro. No problem. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to end the video here. We out of here.